good evening everyone it's 7 o'clock so we will start and good afternoon and good morning to delegates uh, who have joined from other parts of the world uh, i am sure there are some new uh, uh, um, attendees today who were not there yesterday so i'll just give a brief introduction uh, the mahatma gandhi university of medical sciences and technology is a private medical university the first uh such uh, university in the state of uh, rajasthan uh, we have uh, seven affiliated colleges including medical dental nursing and other uh, paramedical sciences the mahatma gandhi medical college hospital is a 1500 bed tertiary level referral uh, hospital uh, the department of surgical gastroenterology is a part of center for digestive sciences which includes medical and surgical gastroenterology hepatology and hpb surgery and most probably we are a unique institution in the country which has all these four uh, separate independent departments the department of surgical gastroenterology was formally established uh, by my colleague dr ajay sharma who joined as uh, head of the department of surgical gastroenterology and we started the mch uh, fellowship training program 3 year post general surgery training program in surgical gastroenterology when my senior colleague uh, retired major general rp chobe uh, joined the department uh, before i came in and uh, the liver transplant program at uh, our institute is uh, uh, headed by uh, dr namish mehta who is the chief transplant surgeon at gangaram hospital he is ably assisted uh, in liver transplants by my young faculty colleagues dr anand nagar dr shashwat sarin and dr vinay mahala all the patients who uh, come to us with chronic liver disease they are looked after by the hepatology team which is headed by dr saraswat who has had a long stint uh, at scpgi lucknow where i also worked for more than 3 decades and dr karan and his uh, young faculty colleague uh, we have a separate independent uh, department of organ transplant anesthesia and all our liver transplants are looked after intraoperatively by dr vipin goel dr gaurav goel and dr ganesh nimje and the post operative care of these patients no, is provided no, by my no. colleague dr uh, anand kumar jain so uh, jaipur surgical tutorial actually is an online education portal which we started 2 years ago it's being looked after and coordinated by my young faculty colleague dr anand nagar so in the chat i have put his contact number uh, those of you who want to join jst uh, uh, please whatsapp um, your name uh, institution city and country to him uh, we conduct a session every saturday 9 to 10 um, mainly related to gi and uh, hpb surgery and uh, this master class is being presented by my former fellows who are now uh, senior consultants in their own right at various institutions and hospitals in country and who are actively involved in uh, liver transplant uh, so it's their love and affection for me that they not only agreed to contribute but also agreed uh, that i who have no hands on experience with liver transplant be the moderator so thank you all uh, very much and i am also um, uh, i have to express my thanks to dr sonal asthana the current president of ltsi who joined us yesterday to formally inaugurate uh, this master class and uh, also uh, agree to uh, uh, send the information about the master class to the ltsi members uh, so with that uh, introduction and background i would hand over uh, to dr giriraj bora uh, giriraj have you joined yeah dr giriraj has joined uh, himanshi please make dr g bora also um, as one of the co host he is going to chair am i audible sir good evening ah yes good evening over to you giriraj please take over uh, uh, and uh, let me introduce the speaker dr jayant reddy is the uh, the uh, transplant and hpb surgeon at apollo in uh, bengaluru and dr ashish bansal is uh, a member of faculty at the uh, king george's medical college uh, in lucknow where they have uh, started a transplant program recently so dr giriraj will be chairing and ashish would be the lead questionnaire so he will start questioning uh, uh, dr jayant first giriraj please start hi uh, good evening and and thanks sir for the for your introduction and and uh, inviting me for this uh, wonderful initiative 
and, and and it's i mean for last two years i have heard that i mean these online classes have gained a lot of popularity among among the various mth and dnb students so i guess i mean we are going to talk about donor hepatectomy and uh, the dr jayant reddy will be i mean uh, he'll be starting the talk on on donor surgery and and the various technical aspects of uh, uh, living donor liver transplantation from donor point of view so dr jayant i mean you know if you can share your slides and we can start the the presentation yes just a second trying to organize Uh, good evening to everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, so please. Thank you, thank you for the kind introduction and um, um, a big thank you to Professor V K Kapoor and the entire faculty at uh, Mahatma Gandhi Hospital uh, Jaipur for organizing this and uh, having uh, all of us over. Hope to share uh, some knowledge that I've gathered over the years, start, which started off at SGPGI. Uh, I'll start off this presentation. I'll try and keep it uh, brief and simple. So LDLT is a directed organ donation. Um, there is a element of double equipoise, which um, is a clear judgment to balance the donor risk on one side with the recipient benefit on the other. Uh, as much as we may try, it may never be possible to justify a surgery which violates the core principle of medicine. That is primum non nocere, do no harm, because you're subjecting a perfectly healthy individual, not a patient, to um, a major surgical intervention so that he can be of help and um, improve uh, the recipient that is uh, invariably related to him. Uh, despite taking all the precautions, donor complications are inevitable and it remains the single best, the bigger, biggest deterrent to performing live donor liver transplant, keeping the donor risk to a bare minimum by an extensive donor evaluation and following surgical protocol stringently is of paramount importance. This includes standard operating procedures, which should be followed irrespective of which member of the operating uh, team is uh, on the donor side, uh, regularly following checklists and having a disaster plan in place just in case there is um, a severe complication to the donor. Ongoing success of the live donor liver transplant entirely depends on donor safety, and donor safety, like I said, is paramount. Um, despite this, there have been uh, reports of donor death, uh, most of them unpublished, but uh, there are centers which are brave enough and gone ahead and published. The first one is from India. It was published in 2010. Uh, in this case, the donor died because of acute severe pancreatitis. And then there was another personal viewpoint that was published in the AJP in 2010. Uh, this was from the United States. And this invariably attracts a lot of media attention, um, sometimes rightly so. Um, uh, and um, it's extensively covered. And this is not good for um, the hospital. Uh, the program in general and uh, the overall um, development of live donor throughout the world. Um, there have been extensive studies about the long-term outcomes of uh, live liver donation. This is an analysis of a national database from South Korea, where the donor mortality across about 10,000 live liver donors was about 2.2%. Um, and two of these deaths were within 60 days of live liver donation, so directly related to surgery. And when they compared uh, the uh, individuals who had donated their liver to the general population, there was an increased risk of death, mainly from suicide, cancer, and also the other un unclassified reasons. Uh, and across the board, the liver donors were at higher risk than the controls. So long-term follow-up is very important. It is not just, you know, they donate, you follow them up in the OPD for the first three to six months, and then you don't see them again. I think it's very important that you see them year on year 
and uh, including a psychosocial support is of paramount importance and this is especially important when there is an adverse outcome to the recipient donor safety checklists again cannot stress more uh, these uh, those who are accepted to donate have cleared the checklists need to have a weekly review of their imaging until the day of surgery there should be two preferably three independent reviews by the surgical team and this minimizes the risk of missing any subtle anomalies and ongoing quality assurance and improvement of the uh, surgical outcomes as a whole all the blood work up should be repeated to ensure that these results are less than a month old when the donor is admitted for the surgery um despite this there are uh, reports of aborted donor hepatectomy D despite the extensive evaluation we heard a wonderful talk yesterday and uh, despite this there was a, this was a um, publication uh, coming from turkey where uh, about 77 donor candidates were aborted um uh, due to uh, predominantly donor causes and the main reason was uh, quality of the liver parenchyma i think in this this day and age this uh, is sort of unacceptable i think there are enough and more modalities available at our disposal to evaluate donors thoroughly so that this can be avoided at all costs uh surgical planning this is a short video i've taken this liberty to borrow i tried tried to get videos i didn't have one of my own this is from the toronto surgical atlas i'll quickly go through it um this is a, a live liver donor who's a 48 year old lady and the plan is for a donor right hepatectomy excluding the middle hepatic vein that is that is the middle hepatic vein stays with the um, uh, donor um and uh, the graft will consist of the right hepatic vein with segment 5 and 8 veins so you can see the right hepatic uh, uh vein here this is the middle hepatic uh, vein and this is a large segment 8 vein joining this and uh, this is the main portal vein this is standard anatomy in this and there is a right inferior hepatic vein in this case Uh, the plane of transection in a live liver donor extends from the gallbladder fossa inferiorly uh, to the groove between the right and the middle hepatic vein superiorly this particular donor had a standard portal vein a standard arterial anatomy but had two bile ducts so your type 3a uh, type 3b biliary anatomy where the right posterior sectoral duct was joining the left hepatic duct so the plane of transaction after dividing will give you two bile ducts in the end a single portal vein uh, right hepatic vein and the cut surface you, we will get one segment 8 hepatic vein and one segment 5 and an inferior hepatic vein so bench uh, reconstruction it is important to um pay attention to every single point when performing this surgery starting off with patient positioning on the table it is important to avoid neuropraxia injuries because there are uh, retractors in place for the costal margin uh, standard approach is where the arms are tucked in by the side of the body there should be good padding between the arms and the retractor side posts large donors might need a side extension and all pressure points should be padded um um there should be um devices in place to decrease the incidence of deep venous thrombosis in the post operative period a patient warmer should be there the arterial lines should be compressed and you should try your utmost level best to keep the anesthesia colleagues happy uh coming to the operative steps the standard incision um i'm talking about uh, open right the standard donor hepatectomy uh the reverse l incision is the standard that is used midline can be used we have used it but it is a challenge when there is a large liver graft there are multiple right inferior hepatic veins or multiple portal veins where there is not enough space and all these vascular clamps are clashing with each other uh once you do the laparotomy it is important to visualize and palpate the entire liver to ensure good quality uh then proceeding with mobilizing the right hemi liver by incising the right triangular and coronary ligaments it is important when doing this to avoid 
unnoticed thermal damage to the diaphragm uh, because we've had a personal instance where the donor came back to us about three months later with a large diaphragmatic hernia um, um, on the right side. And this was a publication. Um, so it is important to minimize the use of the cautery, keep the cautery settings to a low, use forced coagulation setting instead of using a spray mode and preferably use a monopolar forceps rather than a pencil cautery. Uh, once the right hemiliver, uh, as a part of the right hemiliver mobilization, you ligate and divide the caudate in short hepatic veins. You secure the divided ends with uh, suture. You divide the hepatocable ligament between vascular clamps and any oh, inferior okay. right hepatic veins which are more than 5 millimeters should be preserved for a bench reconstruction. Uh, suprahepatic vena cava is dissected and the groove between the right and the middle hepatic vein is developed. An umbilical tape is passed in the groove between the right hepatic vein and the middle hepatic vein and uh, for an hanging uh, maneuver. So this is a, a video uh, doing the right um, level mobilization, reviving the right triangular ligaments. So it is important that you know you minimize thermal injury here. You stay in the loose areolar tissue between the diaphragm and the liver. Um, you know not to enter the liver capsule and all the short. Not pani, pani, not pani, pani drink. This is just to like it's eat. A, and uh, these should be again secured with uh, proline uh, sutures. Um, and so this is an inferior right hepatic vein that is uh, dissected. So this is looped. Uh, this is not divided at this stage. This no, no, no. This is all whole. Pani and the kindikil. See? See Pani. Uh, this is the hepatocable. Pani drink. This ligament. And this uh, is some, you know, when it is large, it is better to divide it between clamps and... Uh, you know, overrun the divided ends with a proline suture. So once this is mobilized, uh, there is a lot of space uh, that uh, we are able to gain access to. And um, once this is done, we are able to develop uh, the plane between the right and the middle hepatic vein. So that is the inferior vena cava accessory segment six, seven branch uh, below and the right hepatic vein uh, superiorly. And uh, so here you pass um, a right angle and uh, take the best uh, umbilical tape and pass it beneath the segment six and seven right hepatic vein uh, for completion of the hanging window. Next would be the hyla dissection. Um, this uh, um, is the most important uh, step uh, the initial step of a donor uh, right epitectomy. So retrograde cholecystectomy is performed, calyx triangle uh, dissection. Uh, you, it's good to leave a small cuff of the gallbladder at the lower end to facilitate cannulation of the cystic duct and for an intraoperative phalangogram. The bile duct is retracted medially and you need to be careful when doing this uh, to avoid direct, uh, you know, directly holding the bile duct. It's better to use a vein retractor when doing this. Once uh, this is done, you dissect and loop the right hepatic artery proximal to the cystic artery branch and avoid undue handling of the right hepatic artery during hyla dissection because it can go into spasm. And in worst case scenarios, you can even cause an arterial dissection. Uh, you divide the loose lymphatic and loose areolar tissue along the right border of the portal vein. And when doing this, it's important to make sure that if there is any replaced right hepatic artery or an early branching of the right hepatic artery, you, you, are, you are aware about this and you take um, the requisite safety measures to protect them. Uh, before looping the right hepatic, right portal vein, uh, we invariably will need to divide small caudate branches. Uh, and these should again be um, um, uh, it is important uh, to identify the takeoff of the left portal vein from the main portal vein while looping the right uh, portal vein and it is especially important uh, when uh, before retrieving the graph when you place a clamp, a vascular clamp on the right portal vein that you're able to see the initial takeoff of the left portal vein from the main uh, portal vein. Uh, it would be good to lower the hyla plate. This um, has helped us, um, um, you know, um, towards the end when you're doing the biliary dissection and also 
when um, using a marking um, clip uh, before doing the um, intraoperative cholangiogram. Uh, a short video on uh, the, the portal dissection. Um, so starting off with um, dividing the gastrohepatic ligament and um, um, retrograde uh, cholecystectomy. Uh, so the loose areolar tissue along the hepatotable uh, ligament is uh, incised. So this patient had already had a cholecystectomy. So the ligament uh, cystic duct is probed and then uh, cannulated. Uh, with uh, five French infant feeding tube for uh, intraoperative cholangiogram. It is good to retain a cuff of the gallbladder because we need to do this cholangiogram about three times uh, throughout the course of surgery. And sometimes, you know, when it is just in the cystic duct because of the valves of Easter, it is difficult to cannulate it. There you can see the right hepatic artery that is dissected. And you can see how the surgeon is holding the um, right, uh, the loose area tissue on top of the bile duct and not holding the bile duct directly. So this is a marking clip. Once the hyla plate is lowered, uh, this will. Uh, uh, this is an initial clip. So we can see the clip here. Uh, this is the clip and an intraoperative cholangiogram, and this is the plane of transaction, which will be perpendicular to both the right anterior sectoral duct as well as the right posterior sectoral duct. The portal vein is now being dissected. So this is the small caudate branches, otherwise called the annoying veins, which uh, need to be ligated between. Um, suture ligatures and then reinforced with proline sutures. So the portal vein is looped and when doing this, it is good to have a small peak to make sure that the left portal vein, you're not looping the left portal vein accidentally. So intraoperative cholangiogram, it is selectively used in certain centers. There are centers like uh, Rela, Rela Institute, which uh, almost never use an intraoperative cholangiogram. They primarily rely on the biliary anatomy uh, based on the MRCP that is done during workup. Uh, but we, uh, in our unit, regularly use the intraoperative cholangiogram. So cystic duct is cannulated with the five French infant feeding tube. It is important to get the table position and the angle right. You place a large clip at the planned RXT transaction site and you occlude the distal end of CBD. This is very, very important. Uh, uh, we've had a couple of near misses with our donors. And in both these cases, it was because of pancreatitis. And the reason for pancreatitis was during the cholangiogram, because of a low insertion of the cystic duct on, this, on the CBD, there was opacification of the uh, pancreatic duct by the contrast. And this um, led to um, the, the donors developing pancreatitis in the post-operative period. Uh, we are all aware about this. This is the Huang's uh, classification. So type 1 is the standard biliary anatomy, type 2 is stratification, type 3A is the, where the right anterior joins the left, right, and type 3B is the right posterior, and 4A is when the right uh, anterior is joining the uh, common hepatic duct and uh, type 4B is where the right posterior septal duct joins the cystic duct or the common hepatic duct directly lower down. So these are pictures of some cholangiograms. So you can see here in the first one, the right posterior septal duct is joining the left hepatic duct. And similarly here in the second picture and the third picture, you can see multiple um, uh, ducts, which are all sort of coalescing uh, together, trifurcation in the left lower column. And then here you can see the type 4B where the posterior sectal duct is joining the um, common hepatic duct lower on. Uh, the next step would be marking the transaction plane. So you temporarily clamp the right hepatic artery and the right portal vein, identify the demarcation line and score the liver surface with pottery. This groove, like we already discussed, runs from the right middle hepatic vein uh, groove to the middle of the gallbladder fossa in Chile. At the lower end, it is important that you deviate the transaction plane slightly into the base of segment four to ensure that when you're doing the biliary uh, division, that there is an adequate liver parenchyma all around and there is plate tissue around the right hepatic duct so that you're not compromising on the vascularity of the right hepatic duct. Parenchymal transaction as a standard in most centers is done by using the CUSA. It is uh, important for the sur surgeon to be aware of the standard setting of the CUSA, which he is comfortable with. The portal structures during transaction are usually white. The hepatic veins have bluish tinge. 
small portal structures in hepatic veins during the transaction are clipped and are ligated. Uh, the segment five hepatic veins are usually encountered within a couple of centimeters of starting the pancamel transaction. If uh, at doubt it is about the position of the middle hepatic vein, it is important to follow the, the V5 and the V4 onto the middle hepatic vein without ligating any hepatic veins initially. And if unsure about the significance, you're not sure, you know, you're on the CT, you feel that there was only one segment five hepatic vein, but when you're doing the parenchymal transaction, you find that there are, and there is another segment five hepatic vein, you're not sure whether this is significant. You can assess uh, by temporarily clamping these hepatic vein branches and at the same time occluding the right hepatic artery temporarily to see the area of congestion. And if it is not significant, these can be ligated and you proceed with your parenchymal transaction. Jayant, we will have to leave some time for the chair and audience also. Sure, so. I'll speed it up. So parenchymal transaction, it's important to stay on the right border of the middle hepatic vein. You need to bear the middle hepatic vein and the hanging maneuver is useful when you are going around the segment 8 hepatic vein. Uh, the caudate division is the last part and this is aided by the hanging maneuver. And uh, as the transaction approaches, you move to the left uh, towards the segment 4 and then you complete the parenchymal transaction. Uh, I'll rapidly run through this uh, video. Uh, so this is scoring the hepatic parenchyma, um, you know, from superiorly to inferiorly and lower down, you deviate slightly to the uh, base of segment four. Uh, the parenchymal transaction is done by using the QSA and it is important to stay right on the middle hepatic vein and not deviate uh, to the left or right so that you are on the right plane you can take stay sutures. So this is a large segment eight hepatic vein and the hanging maneuver is very useful. So here, once you complete the parenchymal transaction above the segment eight hepatic vein, you loop the umbilical tape lower down and you can complete the rest of the transaction. Uh, before proceeding with the rest of the steps, it's important that only the biliary hyla plate is uh, left. Uh, the bile duct division, you repeat an uh, intraoperative cholangiogram. Again, you make sure that you know where you're going to transect the right hepatic uh, duct. And um, once you confirm that, you divide the bile ducts sharply, the hyla plate sharply. And hemostasis of the hyla plate blood vessels, it's important that you do it right there and then not leave it for later. The duct lumen should be probed to make sure that you are in the right plane. Uh, nothing should be assumed. The caudate duct should be closed and the stump of the right hepatic duct should be closed with PDS sutures. And finally, you repeat um, a cholangiogram again to confirm. Type 3A and type 3B are as a challenge. So sometimes you might have to repeat another cholangiogram after closing the first uh, stump. Uh, so this is uh, a biliary um, bile duct is being divided. Um, so the first duct is divided and then you once that is done, you use a probe and um, uh, make sure that you know, you're not missing any duct. This is a small caudate duct that is uh, there. Now, moving on, once this is done, you coordinate with the recipient surgical team. Never be in a hurry. Make sure that they have not run into any problems on the recipient side so that you can reduce the cold ischemic time. Uh, as a first step, you ligate the right hepatic artery proximal to the origin of the cystic artery. Take care that you're not injuring the segment four artery in this process. And when applying the portal vein clamp to ensure that you are visualizing the proximal portion of the left portal vein. In a type B or C portal vein, you need to clamp the anterior and the post posterior portal vein separately. It's in, it will be good to take a marking suture to orient the uh, port posterior portal vein. So it's, uh, the outflow is then clamped, the RHV and the IR IRHV. It is good to apply the clamp on the vena cava so that you can take a small cuff but uh, not too much when you're clamping the right hepatic vein because you don't want to compromise on the um, lumen of the, the inferior vena cava. Then subsequently, you divide the right portal vein followed by the outflow. The graft is placed in a bowl, dipped in night flush, and then flushed with organ preservative solution. Um, then subsequently, you... And I think we can leave the bench and uh, you can continue. Thank you, sir. So, uh, like I said, all portions of this is very, very important. Nothing can be taken for granted. Um, this is by far, I think, the um, one of the most complex surgeries that we perform. 
and um, you know you can't perform it like a routine donor appendectomy uh, donor safety is of uh, the primary importance in this surgery so it is important that you are never carefree never uh, take anything for granted and follow each step meticulously like uh, how you have set protocols in place thank you giriraj um sir dr ashish i mean you know if he wants to ask some question i mean yes yeah. yes sir uh, sir thank you uh, first of all i sir, uh, thank dr kapoor sir for giving me this opportunity and uh, so thank you for uh, jayan sir for such an informative and such a beautifully animated videos and uh, nice presentation sir uh, sir i just wanted to know uh, briefly about the role of icg in donor hepatectomy in current day and age um so icg um in the open uh, donor hepatectomy it is a challenge uh, to use uh, icg we have tried to use it in a couple of um, cases but we haven't uh, had uh, very good results we still rely by the intraoperative cholangiogram but in a minimally invasive hepatectomy be it whether laparoscopic or robotic i think icg is of paramount importance because uh, the intraoperative cholangiogram is not feasible in these situations and uh, the surgeon is primarily relying on the uh, um, uh, the endocinin green uh, um uh, injection and delineation of the bile ducts for uh, bile duct uh, division safely but we personally have had a good uh, experience of using it in open door okay. yes sir uh, sir one more question sir uh, thank you sir uh, sir uh, as we didn't discuss uh, benching because of the lag of the time uh, yes. you whatever photos you have shown you have used ptfe graft for the reconstruction of the mhv sir Correct. what is the take sir for the gra- uh, explant uh, portal vein to be used as a uh, mhv uh, reconstruction yeah so initially we were using uh, the explant portal vein and cadaver portal veins uh, but um, harvesting it it has multiple holes and um, you know it takes a lot of time it takes um, you know more time than using a ptfe and we did switch to ptfe we were apprehensive but these ptfes that we are using are heparin coated they are very pliable and we use a single out flow um so we anastomose the uh, segment 5 end to end with the ptfe then any other segment 5 the segment 8s end to side and the end of the ptfe is joined to the right hepatic vein and there is a single out flow uh, and um, you know once we have started doing this we have found that our uh, out flow issues are much lesser and also the incidence of thrombosis of the neo hepatic vein has come down so we in our unit prefer to use uh, the uh, ptfes over uh, cadaveric vein or uh, yes sir uh, one more small question sir as you have mentioned the gortex suture yes, many sir. of us uh, as a gen- uh, su- surgical gastro colleague we don't uh, know about the importance of using gortex suture sir yes, what sir. is your take of using gortex over proline sir um so when we were using so initially in this slide you can see we are using proline sutures but we found that the suture site holes usually bleed after reperfusion with gortex we that is almost we, we never see it and it is very pliable and um, you know it easily goes through and the suture site bleeding uh, at the you know during reperfusion is significantly lesser uh, the cost is a little bit of a constraint uh, but um, um you know it's definitely comes with its uh, benefits then if you would quickly take two or three questions in the chat sure uh, very brief Dr. Jain, can i can i can i ask you a small yeah giriraj please so i mean you know you said i mean you know 2% of your donors had i mean you know some aberrant anatomy and you abandoned the donor hepatectomy so can you just i mean uh, can so you just uh, that is what kind of anatomy is a contraindication for i mean not going mm-hmm. ahead sir i think in this uh, day and era in india um unless until we encounter sort of four or more bile ducts uh, inadvertently uh, during a cholangiogram i don't think that is a contraindication that was a study that was published in uh, 2010 and i just highlighted it just to uh, say that uh, the intraoperative cholangiogram is still has a role in this present uh, day and era uh, but i don't think um, we would uh, uh, negate proceeding with uh, the donor hepatectomy just because uh, of what uh, the intraoperative cholangiogram shows exactly because you know even if there are three ducts like yes. 
so like uh, sometime i mean you know we have encountered that the donor has three ducks four i have never seen practically yes. so three ducks i mean we have yes. even if, i mean you know one duck gets stricture in the long term i mean you know you can always embolize the portal vein of that particular you know segment okay. and and you can i mean uh, you know then that subsequent atrophy doesn't cause any long term i mean biliary complication in the recipient as per and the second question i mean you said that uh, uh, in the rela institute they are not doing uh, intra op angiogram yeah. in fact in ncr it is slightly different practice there are centers who are not doing mrcp and they are just doing intra op angiogram so it's a different kind of a practice i mean here so here people i mean because they know i mean they can handle i mean any kind of a biliary anatomy so, yeah, so they are they are not doing pre op mr in yeah. fact intra op angiogram i mean they are performing and 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 in most of the donors biliary uh, anatomy as such has not been an issue anymore i mean to abandon the donor hepatectomy absolutely so uh, from my understanding the pro, the, the uh, prof for relas institute changed because of this unfortunate incident where they had this uh, pancreatitis develop in the donor and uh, they felt that uh, you know they are able to get an equally good uh, imaging on the mrc yeah right right so uh, jant we have four or five minutes quickly if you can take the questions in the chat sure um absolute contraindications to anatomical variations i think would be the where uh, there is a single portal vein which is supplying the liver in entirety the other would be um, sort of a um, portal vein where the right anterior branch is uh, uh, coming off well high up from the left portal vein that is something i would be apprehensive of at least initially during the um uh, you know the, you know my career uh, otherwise the the two arteries um, multiple um, bile ducts like um, um, dr uh, giriraj bora said is not a contraindication um donor in reference to the recipient hepatectomy concerns so we would always like to start the donor first there are a few instances where we would start the recipient first one would be a retransplant and uh, second would be uh, where uh, there is a hcc beyond uh, milan and especially in instances where uh, we have treated uh, portal vein tumor thrombus and we have uh, downsized we would like to start the recipient first make sure that there is no extrahepatic disease we are missing before starting the donor intraop donor liver biopsy um, i don't think has any role uh, if at all anything should be done should be uh, during the evaluation period Uh, diameter of the PTFE graft. Uh, we prefer to use an 8 mm uh, or a 10 mm. Uh, earlier, we using the regular ones, non-heparin coated. But uh, nowadays, the heparin coated is much more pliable, and uh, it is uh, you know we found it at least to be uh, more patent. Uh, Slit-like opening of B8. When do you do a venoplasty B8 and RHB? So we have started uh, um, using a single outflow. um by what dr pamecha and team have described and we have found that uh, the implant time is shorter and uh, um and uh, the uh, you know our at least experience with uh, problems with outflow and thrombosis of the new uh, mhv has uh, significantly come down with this cordic lobe division yes i would like to perform a cordic lobe uh, division before the hilar division um um you would um, prefer not to loop the hilar plate in entirety just make sure that you have completely done the parenchymal transection and once you are sure with that then you uh, you confirm where you are going to divide the bile duct and go ahead uh, no dissecting on the um, uh, bile duct uh, completely avoided um mhv in the right graft we would include it only if uh, the donor um, is is young um the flr in the donor is uh, close you know easily more than uh, closer to 40% because you need to take into con- uh, consideration the congestion volumes also and um, very rarely have we found except for a partial uh, mhv where there are multiple segment uh, five hepatic veins you could include a partial mhv but a total mhv uh, we would try and avoid as much as possible again because donor safety is of paramount importance a uh, post uh, patient in the post ldlt setting operative non operative in pvt i think we will leave that for the complications part so sure. i think uh, we have to stop we are already at 740 so apologies for the delay
Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Giriraj. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you.